You may have heard us refer before to the accidental architecture. Well, EMC began to address the accidental architecture with the introduction of DD Boost for Oracle RMAN a couple of years ago. Before then, Oracle DBAs were being asked to rely on IT for backup and recovery via a backup application. If this really didn't meet their SLAs, they would use their own backup utility, such as RMAN, to back up to whatever disk was available to them, even if it was expensive primary storage, thus the accidental architecture. The introduction of DD Boost for Oracle RMAN changed all of this and simplified the backup process by allowing those DBAs to back up directly to a data domain system from their native utility in a faster and efficient manner via the DD Boost protocol. Expanding on the success of DD Boost for Oracle RMAN, EMC introduces data domain boost for enterprise applications such as SAP, SAP HANA, Microsoft SQL Server, which we'll cover in this demo, and IBM DB2. The new integrations provided by DD Boost for Enterprise Applications will provide benefits to database and big data customers in three key areas. First of all, these advanced DD Boost for Enterprise apps allow the application owners to completely control backup and recovery procedures through their applications, enabling self-service backup and eliminating the accidental architecture I referred to before. In addition, Data Domain Boost offers faster, more efficient backups by distributing parts of the deduplication process to the application server, enabling client-side deduplication, which increases backup performance by up to 50% and reduces bandwidth requirements by up to 99%. Finally, these new integrations expand EMC's offering for database and big data backup, creating flexibility for customers by offering them choices on how to protect their enterprise applications. Customers can now choose to enable app owner control through DD Boost for enterprise applications, such as Microsoft SQL, and have the option to easily upgrade with the data protection suite, enabling them to gain a centralized catalog and policy management. DD Boost for Microsoft SQL provides app owners direct control of backup to data domain using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Distributing parts of the deduplication process to the application server enables client-side deduplication for faster backups, and by giving the app owner control of the recovery process through native utilities, he does not need to go through the backup admin enabling faster recovery. DD Boost for Microsoft SQL is supported over both IP and fiber channel, so customers in either environment can benefit from this integration without needing to change their infrastructure. So now let's take a look at how a DD Boost for Microsoft SQL uh, backup is performed directly within the SQL Server Management Studio. You can see directly within the native interface is uh, a dialog window that handles the backup settings. I can easily select which database I want to perform a backup of and which SQL Server instance uh, that database resides on. And then just specifying um, such as backup set name, description, as well as an expiration, and then very easily be able to browse all of my data domain systems within the environment. From there, I can then specify which specific um, settings I want to apply for that backup, such as creating a Stripe backup or doing the DD Boost backup over Fiber Channel, which we do support. And then it's as simple as just specifying those settings and clicking run and the backup kicks off directly from the SQL Server over to the data domain system via DD Boost. Next, we'll walk through the recovery operation directly in DD Boost for Microsoft SQL. And just like the backup, we'll leverage the same native interface within SSMS. We'll click over to the Restore tab, and you can see that the menu-driven dialog is just as straightforward as when we perform the backup. We simply specify which data domain server we want to access the backup catalog from. 
and whether or not we want to specify that data domain backup was done over Fiber Channel. Then we simply from the catalog select the SQL Server instance, the database, and then what destination database we want to specify. So this can be a separate database or the same database and overwritten. And now we can actually go onto a timeline and move the slider to the exact restore point we want that database to be restored to. For this demo, we'll simply just say last backup. And now you can see here in the restore uh, window from the catalog, we can see three different backups of that particular database. So we'll just specify that first backup. And then where we want to restore the database files to. So relocating all the files to um, a specific data file folder or a log file folder. And you can specify different um, directories um, as needed here based on specifics for um, where you store your database files versus your log files. So we'll very easily browse for these specific paths. And now once that the paths are chosen, I can go into the options and choose to overwrite the existing database or more importantly, take a tail log backup before I perform the restore. Once we specify the options, again, just like the backup, it's as easy as just clicking run to apply all the settings and the restore completes. As you've just gotten a taste of in this demo, Data Domain Boost for enterprise applications and specifically Microsoft SQL Server provides tremendous data protection value. We saw how the DBA has control and application visibility directly within SQL Server Management Studio. Data Domain Boost for enterprise applications also provides fast online and non-disruptive automated and reliable backup and recovery. Application consistency is also assured for reliable recovery. An integrated deduplication delivers unmatched storage optimization and backup performance that's unmatched in the industry. Point-in-time database recovery allows for quick database restores, as you witnessed in this demo. Also keep in mind that DBAs are empowered in both VMware and Hyper-V virtualized environments where guest agents are deployed on SQL servers. So this similar functionality can be fully deployed in a virtualized environment.